here we are it's Sunday morning and it's just about 11 o'clock and up in front of us here we have oh three or four boats all jesters we're all heading out to do the jester challenge despite the fact that there's hardly any wind at all so no worries we're going to go and see what happens we all think we're ready we've got our sails up and uh, yeah here we go So once we've motored out of the harbour, the engines will go off, the sails will go up, and we'll see if we can move. So yeah. And we're out in the Bay of Puthelli. It's half past 20 to 12. The start is in 20 minutes and I don't know if we can get to the start line. We've got, ooh, look at that, naught point naught knots of wind, <laughs> which is much as forecast. But um, yeah, I'm sure it'll pick up in a moment. We'll be going really fast. So this is it, the start of the Jester Challenge 2023. And it's uh, it's obviously neck and neck. It's going to be fun. Here we are. It's twelve minutes after the start. Most exciting start. And uh, because it's only twelve minutes after the start, you can see some boats. Um, we're all in a bunch, which I don't suppose it'll last very long. And we're we're moving. We're moving, it's a lovely afternoon. And we've got about six knots of apparent wind here, and we're doing about two and a half knots of, of speed. Nice Sunday afternoon sail. Dolphins love green tambourine. <laughs> right here. Some of these are really big. Look at him. You can't beat some dolphin company. Can't help but smile when you see so many. Incredible. Just still going on. These dolphins are brilliant. I've never seen them so close to the boat. They're really big boys as well. Look at the size of them. <laughs> Got 
cup of tea brewing. Just the job, eh? Four o'clock. Have a cuppa. Fill in the log. <clears throat> Life on board. Out there is the real world. <sighs> yeah. So, after three or four hours of nice wind, suddenly this big thundercloud came up and there was massive drops of rain and all the wind went round all over the place and then it must have bowed a bit and now the wind has stopped completely. Oh no, yes it has, there we are. We have uh, one knot of wind. Not really enough to go anywhere. So we're at least we can't see um, Pucelli anymore. And uh, yeah, it's very quiet. The sails are waiting for wind. Waiting for wind. So what do we do when it's... Um, what do we do when it's when the weather's calm? We go down below and we cook. <laughs> Oh yes. So to horrify those of you that are vegetarians, I shall be shortly creating fish cakes. Great. And with any luck, once I've had my dinner, the weather will come back, wind will come back, and off we will whiz again. Let's hope. Hello, good morning. It's um, Monday the 19th and um, this is day two of the Jester Challenge. Well, it'll be day two in two hours time because it's 10 o'clock. Um, it's another lovely sunny day and in the night lots of things happened. There was darkness and there was rain and there was wind that came and wind that went and wind that stopped and so a fair bit of jumping around. There was also another boat that got very close up behind me, which was pretty, um, pretty scary, really. Um, so uh, I had to keep an eye on him for a while until uh, our courses parted. So there were 10 or 11 of us that left Puthili yesterday. And I expect we're still all out there. But my, uh, there was one guy who was kind of followed me out and he's been following me all the way. And <clears throat> he's the only one that I can still see on my little Wilford radar. Coast Guard, Wilford Coast Guard, oh. Orca 3, Orca 3, radio check, channel 16, please. So, uh, don't know if you can see some reflections there, aren't Orca there? 3, this is Wilford Coast Guard, you're loud and clear, channel 167. The red boat is me, green tambourine, and the green boat is mischief. It's a little boat, about the same size as this one, and we're both heading along as well as we can towards Ireland. We're a bit, we're kind of north of the far end of Wales at the moment, uh, north of St David's Head, and with any luck today, we'll get across towards uh, the Irish coast. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, at the moment the tide's against us, so although the boat's moving at, well, about five knots through the water, because the water's moving as well, it means that we're actually only moving at two and a half knots over the, over the ground. <coughs> but that's not really it's such a big deal, because in a couple of hours' time the tide will change the other way, and it'll start adding to our speed instead of subtracting to it. So from over the day, it'll all turn out the same. Anyway, that's enough waffle from me for now. Speak to you later. Just spotted this little fella. <laughs> Isn't he sweet? He's just come for a rest, I suppose.
Life revolves about food here. Breakfast, yes. <laughs> now, this is what I call busy traffic. The little red boat boat is green tambourine. And all the others, all those green lines and triangles, those are other, other ships and boats. So this is uh, St George's Channel, which is the gap between Ireland and Wales. And it's very, very busy this Monday afternoon. Good evening. Well, we've had a, a brilliant afternoon tearing down across the Irish Sea and around, just about around Council Point. We had lots of wind, we had so much wind that I had to put a wreath in the sail and uh, roll in some of the genera as well. And now we're, uh, it's gone completely the other way. <coughs> the wind's dropped right off, we're down to 1.8 knots of speed through the water. Uh, there's still a big swell, so there's about 1.3 metres of waves and it's uh, pretty terrible at the moment. It's uh, the closest I've been to feeling seasick this whole trip. Um, so I hope it picks up a little bit, but according to the forecast, I don't think it's going to. A quick look outside, shall we? Morning. It's Tuesday the 20th of June and it's the usual battle between tide and light winds. Uh, we're not allowed to use the motor so I'm not using the motor and um, it can be quite difficult to make progress against the tide. Yesterday I uh, thought I'd put a tack in and um, get a bit more distance offshore but after I tacked I discovered I turned exactly back to where I'd come from so <clears throat> that wasn't very positive was it um, and another thing that happened this yesterday evening uh, a large white um, ferry I suppose went past me um, about a mile in front or so no problem at all but then a little bit later I thought what is that smell and I went outside and I was sailing through acres and acres of raw sewage. I tell you, that wasn't nice. Hi, I've just had a nice breakfast of uh, Spanish omelette. Got all the ingredients, used some leftover potatoes from the other night. And uh, it's a glorious day today. The sunny shining. There's a little bit of a breeze, but the forecast from the um, from the Irish Coast Guard says the breeze is going to uh, go away. So I'm just off Mine Head, which is near Dungarvan. And what I'm going to do is to go nice and close inshore and see if I can pick up a sea breeze, um, which is what you get when you get hot air over the land, ascending into the air and making clouds. <coughs> and it draws in uh, cooler air from the sea. So I'm hoping to get a breeze which will take me up the coast. If it doesn't then it'll have to be um, plan B. So we've got to, got to be within a mile of the coast but still about three miles off. Um, it's over here. Well, it didn't work. 
I went in as close as I was comfortable with and doing it didn't really change and I was I suspected it might not because um, there are two windmills on land windmills look they, they're not wind they're wind turbines and uh, they were facing pretty much into the wind as it is out here so I thought it was worth a try but it didn't work out so now I'm tapping out uh, away from the rocks and the lighthouse and when I get far enough I can tack back again and miss this headland. So uh, yeah, let's get on with that. There's the lighthouse. It's Wednesday morning and um, I'm tired. It's uh, three days into this trip and um, how do you do it as a single sailor? Well, you have to, have to take a nap now and then. It's a bit more difficult when you're close in to land like we have been on this trip and when there's a lot of other shipping around which has also been the case this means you can't really take your eye off the ball for very long and have to uh, have to grab a few winks when you can um, last night it was the wind is really on the nose so I'm tacking in and out and uh, I was conscious of the fact that when I went to sleep, if my alarm didn't wake me or if it didn't work, the first thing I would know would be an almighty crash when I hit the rocks. So I was a bit worried. I used my phone uh, with a timer on for 20 minutes or so. So have a good look round, check everything's okay, check the AIS, check the horizon, and if everything's quiet, lie down, set the alarm for 20 minutes. Of course, the thing that worries me is, what if the alarm doesn't go off? What if I don't hear it and I just sleep for five or six hours? It could be disastrous. So I was waking, <laughs> waking up in panic well before the alarm went off. Anyway, today there's very little wind, but what there is means that we can go somewhere close to where we want to. Uh, that is within 30 or 40 degrees of actually pointing towards the Fastnet Rock, which is the rock. That's the uh, big lighthouse at the bottom, southwest corner of Ireland, where I... Uh, that needs to, I need to go round that and then just inside that is Baltimore where I'm headed to. Okay, so hardly any wind. We're doing one knot of speed. Mind you, one knot going straight towards it is probably as nearly as fast as three or four knots when you're zigzagging and beating towards the, the place. So I should be patient. And I think the wind's going to come back in two or three hours' time. Hmm. In the meantime, I might take a nap. Yeah. Good morning. All night there's been no wind at all and we've been drifting aimlessly. This is the day after the solstice. 
and uh, finally there is a little wind so I've put the sails up and they'd rather not be up really but we are moving we're moving we're doing what are we doing 1.3 knots yes okay and we have three and a half knots of wind why won't that not work well you can see my reflection in there never mind hoping to get around the fastnet lighthouse this morning or maybe not this morning i don't think the wind comes up properly till about midday so um, i'm hoping that that will happen and we can get back on track we've just been literally the last night at about 10 o'clock the wind has stopped and it's been stopped for six hours now it's five o'clock in the morning and uh, now it's just a whisper of stuff coming back so <clears throat> starting to get the boat back away from the from the rocks which it was near and uh, I think this wind's going to slowly pick up all day now so we'll be able to get the job done hopefully Fingers crossed, get to Belgium today. I hope so. I've got to read. Uh, listen to that. It's water moving, that is. Past the boat. We're underway. And we're going to Fastnet Rock this morning. Oh, yes. Sunrise off the coast of Ireland. Great excitement. The wind from the south has now come in. So uh, all that slopping around and doing nothing in the flat calm is over. And <clears throat> I'm making a straight line towards the Fastnet Rock, which is the last waypoint on the route. So, if all goes according to plan, should get to Baltimore today. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm, I'm hand steering the boat now because we're just coming up to the Fastnet Rock and Lighthouse. So, rather than fiddle around with the um, wind vane all the time, I've taken over just while we get round. And the rocks, oh, what do you think, a mile, maybe a while away, do you want to have a look? And that, that dirty brown black thing you see to the right, that is the remains of the earlier lighthouse, which this one we're now looking at replaced. Apparently they still use it as a storage facility or handy shed. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Seagull's quietly owning that rock just off there. <laughs> yeah, you can see those steps now, I think you can. Fabulous. Okay, um, there we are, we're round. I um, got a bit busy because trying to handle the sails and steer and avoid the fishing boat. Um, I, couldn't do the, I couldn't do the camera as well. So we're now on the home straight into Baltimore. Um, and the wind, quite nice, the wind that we had going up towards the, uh, the rock has now disappeared. That's, that crashing and banging you can hear is in fact the sail wanting some more wind. So I should stop talking to you and go and rig a preventer on this boom before I do any damage. So uh, yeah, speak to you. Here we are just, just three miles from the end of this event. And the guy who's been following me all the way here 
is uh, Garrett had the absolute cheek to pass me. <laughs> I don't know how he's done that. There you go. So I can barge around inside him on the next turn. So that is Baltimore in front, dead in front, just past the next island. And it looks like we're going to get there in daylight. It's what, three miles? Yeah, more, for, more to follow. Down to New York town, a fair maid I did meet. She took me back to see her place. It was on Barrack Street. And away, Santi, my dear Annie. I knew your girls can she dance the polka. And when we got to Barrack Street, we stopped at 44. A mother and a sister. We're waiting at the door and away, Santi, my dear Annie. I knew your girls. 